Welcome, weary and windswept wanderers, to something certainly scintillating and special. For those of you unfamiliar, Bo, Path of the Tea Lotus, is a metroidvania where you play as Bo, a Tentai Hana, or Celestial Blossom, that descended from the heavens to play a key role in a mysterious ancient ritual. I honestly feel honored to have been helping test Bo for the last month, and for an apparent alpha, all the alliterative accolades in the wide world cannot sumptuously summarize how much I've been enjoying it. The Kickstarter is live right now, and I would highly recommend checking it out. I'll link it in the description below, and I've personally backed the NPC tier myself, so that just goes to show how much I've enjoyed the alpha so far. For those who might not know who I am, my name is Kite. I'm a soothsaying spirit who brings people hope. I do tea and tarot readings on Tuesdays, stream variety and other collabs, and showcase IRL convention footage each month. My mother was a fox, and my father was a weasel, and if you ask me, I have the looks and personality of both, but you can always just call me a noodle. One last thing I wanted to mention, um, this is being live streamed, and I will be streaming more of the demo in the future. Why not drop by my Twitch sometime, where there's always a cup of tea waiting here for you and me. But en enough alliteration, let's dive right into this demonically delightful fever dream. So I have been playing, um, all right, let's take a look at chat really quick. So uh, I did not do the background, but it was done by a very good friend of mine. And I'm so glad that you love my overlay. Um, but now that we're actually in the game, I do want to mention how smooth these backdrops are. And I have been playtesting this game previously in ultra wide where it looked beautiful. Now, currently we're playing this in 1080p. So uh, the resolution is a bit lower, but I love it so far. The Crimson Bamboo Forest is definitely one of my favorite areas in recent memory. And if we go over here, there's a little bit of a secret here. I'm actually, uh, I have played just a few seconds just to make sure everything is working. But over here, there would be some hidden um, Onibi or Foxfire uh, that you can pick up. But over here, we do have a secret that'll lead us to an ancient tablet where it says, Dabbled in moonlight, crimson tendrils seep into soil, making seedlings stir. So we have our first hint of what the plot could be. And I absolutely love the animations. The movement is so fluid in this game. So over here, we have our first save point and our little tutorial segment. So, like I said earlier, the movement is extremely smooth and responsive. Uh, there is some very fancy and fluid footwork, especially when you are doing a lot of the aerial uh, abilities and combat in this game, but we'll see that in just a moment. You can already see that there's some hints on what we'll be able to do in the future. And let's get to Extremely pretty vignette here. Wonder what will happen in that palace. And just in case you are watching on my stream, I've unfortunately re uh, disabled channel redeems, so don't waste your points. I'll redeem them or <laughs> refund them later. And here we have our first main character, Asahi. You. What do we have here? A diminutive demon in a dress, dainty and derivative. I must say, the celestial spit ejected from the heavens this evening is so especially egregious and so incredibly tiny. My respect for the kami evaporates with your every exhalation. Now be gone, you backwards beast, to the bamboo thicket you bumbled out of, and I will spare you from an expedited exorcism and further assault of alliteration. Wait, that earring you wear. Now, there is something of interest. How did one of your... stature come across it? Perhaps I've underestimated you. Please drink this. It should unlock the true form of that earring you wear. So now we have an old kettle. Or we will soon, I should say. We're unlocking our first ability right now, which is going to be the Equinox Staff. And uh, I was so hyped for Bo, I made my own Equinox Staff. If you want to check that out, take a look at it on Twitter. Your earring has transformed into the Equinox Staff. Hold up, down, left, or right to attack in the direction. Press X or left mouse to click to attack. 
you can attack enemies as well as some objects in your environment. So this is going to be uh, our primary method of combat and mobility in the game. So uh, this is the Equinox Staff. Love the animations, how it looks like brush strokes. Extremely beautiful. So let's see. Sahi has nothing else to say. Let's try breaking down this wall. Hmm, I should have foreseen the staff growing feeble from rotting in your oversized yet inferior ear. Have you seen these young crimson bamboo in the forest? Well, we sure did. You should be able to harvest those to use as reinforcement for your staff. Go back and harvest ten bamboo bundles and bring them back here. I shall turn that dainty toothpick into something slightly more respectable, out of pity and no other reason. Alright, so... We have our quest log here. Alright, let's go to setting... It's probably the wrong button here. There we go. All right, so we have three bamboo bundles right now. We have our quests. We have control here. This is basically the main menu. It's changed a little bit since the alpha, but overall a very functional menu. And that looks like something that we might have to fight in the future, isn't it? So my favorite thing when I was testing the alpha is to actually follow this uh, Gasha Dokuro through the background and it'll actually keep going. So I thought that was a really nice touch that it doesn't just disappear uh, in this vignette. Absolutely beautiful background work. So we'll save right here and I'll show off this mechanic right now. So Bo's mobility is extremely satisfying and fluid. Whenever we hit an enemy or one of these lanterns, not only do we pause in midair for a second, our jump also resets and that resets on every hit. So you have a lot of control and fluid mobility as you're going to be traversing through um, these levels, and I'll show off a couple of things that I've learned uh, using this pogo mechanic in a few uh, hidden and secret areas that I found. I've, I've really enjoyed just exploring uh, the world of Bo, even though it's only the first two levels, the Crimson Bamboo Forest and the, well, I won't spoil it, but it's been extremely great so far. And we're just going to collect the last two bamboo stalks over there to get us a head start on the rest of the game. Trevor is the programmer of the game, says uh, Chris, one of the devs from Squid Shop. It's great to see the devs in here as we're streaming this. Um, yeah, Trevor did an amazing job making the controls feel very tight and responsive, and compared to the first alpha build, it is wonderful. Uh, it was already great at the start, but now it's just, it's just a pleasure to pogo around. I'm actually really looking forward to Ultra Wide because this scene just looked amazing when the resolution was just a bit higher. So, <laughs> really looking forward to the first version here. Ah, you've completed my request. Obedient to a fault, like a dull puppy. Perhaps you could be of some use to me in the future, but for now, hand me those bamboo bundles. And that should do it. Now try to forge a new path forward through these burly bamboo and meet the misshapen creatures beyond. It may be dangerous to go alone. And I'm sure everybody caught that reference. But so be it. So we have, uh, speaking of misshapen creatures, there's a lot of great yokai designs, and um, I'm sure I'm going to gush about lore and designs as I play through this game when it's officially released. But we just found the old teacup. And this will store teal tea, which is something I would love to try someday. Foxfire will fill our teapot until it is full, after which point it will overflow into your Foxfire counter on the UI. Hold the left trigger or E key to drink the tea in your pot. This will heal you as long as you hold it, and tap Y to brew more tea in your pot with excess Foxfire. Alright, so now that we have access to the next area, this is where we'll be doing a lot more uh, elbowing and have some of our first skill checks. 
Also, hello everybody in chat. Uh, say hi to YouTube, because we are doing a recording of the Bow Alpha demo for YouTube. And we're going to continue on with the demo, so hi to everybody in the meantime. It's us, the previously foreshadowed misshapen creatures. Bet you didn't expect more dialogue boxes, so sure, aren't they pretty though? Please ignore the incoherent babbling of my unfortunate appendage. He claims to be able to see beyond this realm, but it is perhaps immediately clear that he spouts nothing more than nonsense. A vision! A vision this way comes! See do I, a well-dressed rodent, swing a colorful stick and strike this paper lantern spirit. It is then they will find themselves able to jump once again in midair. Ravings of a lunatic. So Tori is one of my favorite characters uh, just because of this dynamic, and I absolutely love the little flute sounds they use for their names uh, and their speech. <clears> hmm, <throat> an auspicious coincidence or something more. So as we can see here, uh, now we can really kind of demonstrate uh, how fluid the movement is in bow. So I can actually do this entire puzzle without hitting the ground even once, and I love that. These are Kodama. We actually picked up one of the Kodama earlier while we were uh, kind of showing off the Equinox staff. Uh, and those, from what I understand, will be very similar to the Grubs in Hollow Knight, where there's going to be a number of Kodama hidden through the levels, and you'll be able to pick them up, possibly for some sort of completion bonus. Um, from what I hear, they might have a tier on Kickstarter where you can get your own custom-drawn face on a Kodama, but I don't know if that's still true, but that's a rumor I I've heard. All right, so uh, one thing I also love is that you can use enemies to pogo around, and there are some puzzles in the demo that focus on this. And if Chris or Trevor are still here, I still feel like this is the perfect area to include a secret just by bringing all these Oni and using them to pogo up to this area, because that was the first thing in the alpha when I played it. I was like, oh, there has to be a secret there. You can actually reach that area. So is, uh, the collider doesn't follow through. Yeah, that's what I thought, uh, because I, I played around while I was trying to, uh, make sure there weren't any collider issues in this area, um, a few weeks ago, and that was one thing that I've noticed, that that would be the perfect area for a secret. And yes, if you want to see some cursed Kodama examples, you should check out the Community Discord, or as we call it, the Bow Community Discord. It is a great place to get your bow fix while you wait for either the demo or for the full game to pop out. And for example, we have another Kodama right here. Cute little guys. So, as you can see, I'm having a lot of fun with the platforming. It is just a treat to pogo over and... I don't know, I've always been a fan of aerial combat, so I absolutely love it. All right. The fox is back, bolder, braver, bouncier. I remain unimpressed. I've seen even the most uncivilized yokai move with more grace and elegance than that. Oh, come on. That's a little insulting, isn't it? But perhaps elegance is only part of the equation. Show me something with a little more destructive power and you'll have my interest. A vision! It comes to me in glorious 4K resolution! But it's actually 1080p because that's what the demo is coded in. <laughs> a curious fox is the bow beats the bug. One, two, and three! Into the air it flees. Seek after it and press and hold B or right mouse button. I guess the alliteration kind of breaks down there. So we've just... Uh, I'm not sure if we can call it unlocking a new mechanic, but we do have access to a new mechanic right now. And it is beating up these armor pillows to turn them into projectiles. And there's some fun puzzles ahead using those. Hmm, interesting indeed. As it has been foreseen. So whenever I hear the armor pillows, it always reminds me of the loot bugs in Deep Rock Galactic. And I think that like the cute little squeaking noises are definitely a great little touch.
Alright, so here's one of our first puzzles that we'll be doing with the Arma Pillow. I'm just going to reposition it here, use it to hit the switch, and hopefully I won't embarrass myself. No, nope, I totally will. <laughs> so one thing I did want to show off here is that the game is very forgiving. It's a lot of fun. Even if you hit the spikes, there's no instant death. The checkpoints are very generous, so even if you screw something up, and because it's very cold, my hands are starting to be slightly cold as well. I love how I practiced this demo like five, six times, and now I'm having some silly problems, but now we've gotten over it. All right, so there is a secret right here as well. And if you notice, these teal bamboo stalks require an armor pillow, so there's actually two that we can use. We can either pick up the armor pillow from that puzzle over there, or we can actually bring this armor pillow before we solve this puzzle, and that's exactly what I'll do. Oh, I'll also get hit by that by like five different times, so let's drink some tea while we're at it. Uh, this game is very generous with Foxfire and tea, especially with the save points, and I've never actually really had uh, any trouble with the demo which is great in terms of accessibility, and it's just always been pleasant. All right, so we have another Kodoma. Let's get this armor pillow out of here. Can you make impromptu jump boosts? You can definitely do some funny things like I did right here by chaining an armor pillow together. Um, in the Alpha Discord, people were actually talking about speedrunning and doing some very interesting techniques again, which I thought was very cool to see. So if you're asking about advanced techniques, there's definitely some. Alright, we'll bring this guy with us, beat up some of these lanterns for some more Foxfire. Okay, we actually want him to come over here and open up this Kodama. Yes, so I actually uh, do have a... Uh, I did decide to back the game at the NPC level. Uh, so I'm actually very excited to hear how that will work out, because I have a few ideas already. And here's Tori again. Squawk! Another vision! A fox flees freely over gaping canyons, teal petal showers in their wake. You're poppycock. And as you can see, this lantern over here is going to be where we'll need to go, but... We'll have to do some skydiving first. Well, 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 isn't... if it isn't my little tea kettle thief. Where do you get off running off with the possessions of a superior higher being? Excuse me, that was rude. I haven't had my tea for a while. One can find themselves quite irritable without it. Oh, and I definitely agree. I know I'm irritable without my tea. So, this is where you hand over my teapot that you ran off with. No? Greasy, grubby, greedy, commie dropping. <laughs> you know what? Keep the pot. As an infinitely benevolent being, a deal can always be made. I'm feeling a bit weary not having a steady flow of TOT this evening, and the ingredients are so hard to come by. In this cave to my right, there are some ingredients that I need to make an especially potent brew. I might even share some of them, if you hurry. Enter, little one. Procure for me 75 fox flames, 20 teal ore, and one giant armapillow eyeball. Oh, oddly specific and auspicious, isn't it? Alright, so Asahi says the same thing here. We can save right here, and... Another cool thing is that you can actually pogo off these spikes as well, giving you a lot more control than you might otherwise think. There is a skill check here, which we'll come back to which you, you can't finish, so there's definitely something up here that we'll see later. But for now, let's go into the cave.
All right, so we can't make this jump, but this does take us into a few areas. Let's go left of here and take a look at what we can find. So we do have to find those bamboo bundles, that teal ore, and all that fox fire. Oh, I have messed that up. So one thing I wanted to show off is that there are a lot of secrets already in the demo. And by using some of the mobility tools that we have just learned, we can get to some really interesting places. There we go. We have another stone tablet here. Tempest of her tears, tumbling and churning waters, darkness seeps deeper. Mysterious. We have another Kodama here. And as we drop into this passageway, a set of lavish offering tables. Four of them are empty. So as I've been testing uh, the alpha, I'm not sure if this has been implemented into the demo yet, but if you know anything about uh, Japanese mythology, I'm going to assume that this is probably a Tsukuyomi reference, and I'm looking very uh, forward to see what the offering table um, is going to do in the full game, but I do like how we already have a taste of things to come. So let us pogo up. These mushrooms allow us to uh, allow us to pogo up higher. And really, I should beat up these uh, oni just for their fox fire. But uh, just in case people haven't heard, I'm going to date this a bit. There is a big cold front and storm, so. My hands are a little cold. <laughs> That's my excuse as to why I'm missing jumps every so often. Alright, so now that we've completed that area to the right and collected the resources there, let's go down and get into the main area of the cave. So these are one of the bigger armakillos. I actually think um, I was supposed to leave that one alive so we can break this down. Uh, nope, we can just whack it. So this isn't a um, puzzle-specific wall. And we have another puzzle. There we go. We got our Kodama, we'll kill this pinchy thing, which I don't think is actually named anywhere. So um, if Chris could tell me what is the name of this enemy, I would really appreciate it so I can stop calling it the pinchy thing. I have Foxfire to warm up my hands. That is so true. I should definitely use some of this Foxfire I've collected, but I think Asahi would be rather disappointed if I used any of it, right? There we go, we've unlocked that Kodama, which, um, I believe that's, um, trying to remember the name of this enemy, Soseki, I, I believe, based off a animated stone spirit. We can capture, uh, its rocks, and we go into this bullet time mode, which is very satisfying to pull off. Uh, in the next area, which I'm going to show off, it's a bit of a secret, don't tell anybody. We have an area with a lot of those, and a very interesting statue in the back here, as well as a Kodama. So, this area always gives me trouble, because you have to be rather good at your timings, or the overlapping rocks will actually just snipe you out of your animations. At least it feels that way. So let's see if we can get this one aggroed so we can get some more. Yep, just like that. You will be hit if you get caught in the crossfire. So let's see if uh, we can collect some foxfire here in the meantime. Uh, this was one of my favorite areas while I was testing in the alpha to just test out movement and combat because it gets very hectic when you have two or three of... Um, these spirits on you when you're trying to try uh, chain together these sorts of uh, more complex maneuvers, but it is very satisfying after you get the hang of it. 
so let's see if I can actually... I'm actually just gonna stand here and just bait the rock out. There we go. And I think this will be enough for this area. As far as I know, there's no other secrets in this area. Um, if I'm wrong, do let me know. Because I would love to make sure that this is a 100% demo playthrough. Floor is lava achievement. I, I think that secret area is definitely a great area to um, show off the kind of challenges you might encounter in the full game, especially if all um, the projectiles going around. You can do some very interesting aerial acrobatics in that scene. Alright, so uh, this is a alpha. This is um, one area where there is a bit longer loading screen than usual. It shouldn't take too long. Um, but this is where we'll meet another NPC and help somebody out. There we go. Uh, this area does have a bit of a longer loading uh, time than any other area. But uh, don't forget that this is still an alpha and it's still amazing. All right, so we've met Toshi right now. Order, order, I demand order, order, oh, who am I kidding? It's all a mess recently, ever since, no, 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 snap out of it. Toshi, you can do this, deep breaths. Sorry about that, Toshi is back. Excuse me if I seem a bit off, it's just that my precious armor pillows have rolled off again and I seem no ability to make anyone stay. Can you please help me find them and bring them back here? There are four of them, and I know they're somewhere in this cave, above, below, I don't really know. Listen for their squeals. They're possibly so cold, they're probably so cold and alone without their fungal father to watch over them. And I do love how alliteration is a recurring theme in this game, it's a lot of fun. The infamous loading screen chats as, ah yes of course. Alright, so how I usually like to do this segment is to go upwards and then work my way sideways, which, now that I think about it, it probably might be better the other way. But there is something I want to show off by taking this route specifically. I have too much fun hitting those paper lanterns. Okay, so this is one of our first uh, puzzles slash mastery checks for the Equinox Staff and Arma Pillow mechanics. So you can actually chain this very um, competently by shooting it upwards and using the Arma Pillow to reset your movements along with the paper lanterns, but I guess I did it in a much easier way. Being able to use the armor pillow as a weapon is also very satisfying. Jumped a little too early there. All right, so that's our first armor pillow. I say I should probably drink some TLT, even though I know there's a safe point coming up. I would hate to embarrass myself by actually dying. So I think my favorite game, or favorite thing in any game is using enemies to bounce off, uh, so I'm just going to do that every single time. Alright, so what could be over here? The music has shifted, it's become a lot more quieter, and we have a save point. And a locked door. Mysterious. What could possibly be here? other than me running into an enemy because I was reading chat. <laughs> I'll do that a couple of times, I guess. All right, let's see. That armor pillow is now coming right at us. So, uh, we do know that there is a mysterious door here. It's probably going to be a boss, right? Maybe? Who knows? Alright, so here is our second Arma Pillow Mastery Check Challenge puzzle thingy. I actually like breaking these um, 
with these projectiles just because it's a little easier we can just use the armor pillow um to fly right over the gap and we don't really have to worry about any other mechanics So one thing I always have to watch out for, I remember in the alpha, there was one of these, um, like, pincer uh, yokai right on the mushroom, and I remember in my original playthrough, <laughs> it was super frustrating to step on that mushroom and just get pinched out of uh, the air as you're trying to pogo off of it. I'm so glad it changed to something a little more readable. But I, I don't think I'm ever going to f like forget that feeling of just getting plucked out of midair by uh, one of those in Syriaca. Once again, we have a little bit of a loading screen. That's perfectly fine. Um, I'm really enjoying the game so far. I'll take this moment to plug the Kickstarter one more time. Make sure to check out the Kickstarter. It's uh, one of the staff picks right now. They've been funded in under two days. They're at like 150% um, fund rating. So like, go over there, make sure you back them. The game is going to be great and I'm really looking forward to it. Nezuko, you've returned. Zenitsu will be pleased. We have one more. Inosuke, stubborn, yet you can't stay away. Oh, that rhymes too. Welcome back. All right, so we have two of the four armor pillows. So we'll move on to the next area here, which will have our final two. Funded within 30 hours. Isn't that amazing? So make sure to check out that Kickstarter. As far as I know, I believe there's still design a yokai tiers open, and I think there is still a uh, tier where you can get your name in the credits. So definitely check it out. They're adding new stretch goals every single day. So if you're enjoying this playthrough, go support the devs. All right, so here's another uh, skill mastery puzzle where a little easier this time. Uh, I remember when I first did this puzzle. Wow. Okay. Uh, I was going to talk about how you can bounce off the mushroom, grab the ball in midair, and launch it over here, but the puzzle kind of just completed itself, and you know what? I'm all for it. <laughs> so, that was a pretty nice surprise right there. We'll bat that all the way over to Toshi. Zenitsu, you look like you've seen a ghost. The demons won't hurt you now. There's one create an achievement left. Oh, so I'm I'm completely out of date for that one, aren't I? So if you would like to uh, get one of your uh, your mark on this game, make sure to go over to the Kickstarter and donate as soon as possible. Those uh, custom viewer backroom rewards or are, are going really fast. Right, so let's get this last mastery check out of the way. Nice! And we got it on our first try. That one, I think, is extremely satisfying to pull off. Uh, I just absolutely love the armor pillow mechanics. They're so much fun to do. Tanjiro, I knew you would come back. Alright, so we have one more area that we didn't explore off to the right here. Someone changed from achievement to enemy, so there's one achievement left, apparently. Oh, so all the enemy tiers are gone too. I thought as of this morning there were still a few open, but that is very good to hear that um, everyone's going crazy for the back of the rewards. 
All right, so we should now have all the teal ore we need. Well, 39 is definitely more than we need. We have more than enough bamboo bundles, and we have our foxfire. So let's complete this little side quest with Choshi and see what we'll do next. The only limited tier is the achievement tier, and there's one left. Oh, okay, so people have also gotten the boss tier then. Oh, that's super cool. One, two, three, four. Did you have something to do with it? Ever since I met you, things are looking up for Toshi. Here, I want you to have this. Ooh, a strange key. You've received the Shita key. What a pun, Shita key. Hmm, it's a mushroom key. <laughs> Somewhere above there, I had to lock away a particularly unmanageable armadillo. Can you check up on him for me? I absolutely love the story behind the particularly unmanageable un uh, armadillo. And, um, excuse me if I mangle it, Chris and Trevor, but uh, it was a acquaintance of Chris and Trevor's who referred to things as completely manageable. And this armadillo is a direct... Oh, I missed that. That This armadillo is a direct reference to something that is very unmanageable, and I always thought that was such a cute little uh, inside dev joke slash reference. That didn't pogo up. Okay. Mushroom, please. There we go. I can't wait to see uh, the backer reward bosses. I think that that will be very exciting to see what kind of mechanics and designs they'll choose to go with. All right, so earlier on, we showed off this blind hallway with a shrine and a door. I wonder what is going to be here other than a particularly unmanageable armadillo. Okay, let's see if can do this on my first try. When I was first doing uh, the alpha, this boss was actually pretty difficult until you learned how to sight read it. So let's see if I still have what it takes to kill this particularly unmanageable armadillo as I uh, as I get by it immediately. Really fun boss design. I love how you're encouraged to use the Pogo mechanics and everything else that you learn. Sometimes you'll just get hit like that right there. The RNG is a little difficult at times, but the good news is you can sit here and with some timing use the rocks to take care of the boss rather easily. And you can actually use your I was going to try to use your bullet time mode to avoid the boss, but it didn't work out for me right there. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just going to embarrass myself right here. Okay, so over here is actually a really good time to heal. Mostly because this is a pretty decent safe spot. And we're going to convert a whole bunch of foxfire into tea as well. That is one thing I'm never going to get used to, is the timing on that. Jeez. Okay, I'm actually going to focus instead of doing commentary, because uh, it is definitely not working out for me. But, the good news is, if we don't have enough Foxfire, we'll get a little bit more commentary from Asahi, which I would love to show off. For some reason, I, I just can't grab onto these stones. There we go. Ooh, that was stressful. An exciting boss for sure. Okay, let's see if we can just get into phase three. So now that we're in phase three, there are two safe spots. One of the safe spots being right here, and if we can actually make it over to the other side, this is a much better safe spot to be in. Also because we can stand here right on this mushroom. 
most likely attack a little faster in midair too, which is pretty interesting. Alright. And once we're in phase three, the boss should be on its way out. I do like how we have these little peachy yokai as an added challenge and a way to restore some teal tea. Okay, that's so much more. There we go. Oh, and we still got hit there. <laughs> Alright, we got the giant armor pillow eye. I swear I've done this like 20 times in the demo, I can do so much better. We'll, we'll retry it maybe next week and I'll see if I can get a no hit clear. How about that? Doesn't that sound good, chat? <laughs> Alright, we found the giant armapillow eye. <laughs> Alright, so uh, we did actually get all of the uh, foxfires from that boss. I was hoping I could have... Um, like gotten myself to the point where Asahi would say something else if you didn't have enough foxfire but it does look like the boss just fills you up anyway so that's fine was tired of waiting have you found my ingredients yet yes 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 hand them over quickly now as promised you can drink a bit too but only a sip all right We have unlocked a special new ability, and it's probably my favorite thing to do in the demo. We've gotten the Lotus Dash. Tap right trigger or left shift to dash quickly in the direction you're facing. Now the rest of the tea is for me, but remember, with every sip of my tea old tea, a latent gift will be set free. Now leave me be, go see what else there is to see. I suggest you exit this musty cave the same way you came in. Alright, you got us, Sahi. Um, Chad is talking about yokai, and I'm really hoping, hint hint, that there's a Kama Itachi yokai in the final version of the game, because, fun fact, Kite is originally based on the Kama Itachi, and I would love me some Weasley new yokai. Alright, so, uh, one of my favorite things to do in this demo, and I know Trevor even commented on it, is uh, the dash jump. It's so satisfying to pull off, and that little ding at the end gives me a lot of hope that there's going to be some skills that chain into it. But it's it's so satisfying. Alright, so let's... Confirmed Kamei Tachi. Amazing. I love it. You heard it here first. This is a uh, world first yokai confirmation of Kite. We do and we will have Kama Itachi in the full game. All right, so let's uh, get to the first mastery check of the game, which is actually really fun. And as far as I know, I think that's everything in the caves that we can access with the dash. Uh, if I'm forgetting something, let me know and I'll backtrack and do it, but I'm pretty sure we are coming to the tail end of this tale. So here's the first mastery check of the game from what I can tell that's deliberately designed in order to test your competency with the Lotus Dash. So as we can see here, you can actually hit sideways to keep your momentum up and keep yourself in the air to reset your attack and jump. And that's the first mastery check. It is super satisfying. Uh, when I first started, it took me a little while to get a hang of the controls. But now that I know exactly uh, how the resets work, it is so nice to just fly around whenever, wherever you want. Now, uh, in the first gameplay video I recorded uh, for the dev team while I was alpha testing, I did a backtrack back to one of the tablets at the start of the game. Uh, it had a completely different inscription on it, and I was like, oh, this would be the perfect place for a secret when you have the Lotus Dash. But, unfortunately, there's not much uh, there at the moment. So, we'll be wrapping up this demo in just a moment. We'll speak to Tori. We have the same discussion that they want us to use the Lotus Dash here. And it's undeniably unbelievable. It's the end of the demo. Perhaps it's time to start believing. What wonders lay beyond this trivial gap? I foresee a raging water, bustling metropolis, origami fever dreams, and an omnipresent looming darkness. But alas, the Kami are still developing it. 
and even they need a helping hand now and then. Consider contributing to the Kami Kickstart this game and be a part of the creation of this world. And if we click this, we would go to the Kickstarter. But instead, I am just going to ask everybody to go to the Kickstarter, check it out, back it. It's an amazing game. And it's been a wonderfully whimsical demo. Truly a tantalizing show of what will and could be. And I hope everyone is as excited as I am. If you enjoy spending some time with me, why not leave a friendly comment or visit me on one of my streams? I'm Kite, your friendly and furry, Sue saying familiar friend. And never forget that there's always a cup of tea here waiting for you and me. And when the game comes out, maybe we'll make it a cup of tea old tea. Wouldn't that be fun?